Hi, I'm Tom Wendorf, Director of Public Works with the City of San Antonio. And I'm Larry Pierce, Executive Director of the Lime Association of Texas. What you're about to see is a film that shows how we can use innovative pavement technology in a municipal environment. That's right. What we're doing is we're taking several different types of innovative technology
been working with the city of San Antonio in the recent months to uh, to ensure that uh, the correct percentage of lime is used in these projects. Lime stabilization has been used extensively in Texas for over 50 years. Over 70 percent of the lane miles of roads, streets, and highways in the state are built on expansive soils. This fact, coupled with the close proximity and amount of lime produced locally in Texas, has led to the use of lime stabilization as the primary method to deal with in-place expansive clays. Lime is made from limestone, and the resulting product, called calcium oxide, has a natural chemical affinity to react with the chemical components found in clay. As you can see here, the native clay is very dense, sticky, and hard to work with. It exhibits all the qualities you do not want for construction purposes. It expands greatly when wet and contracts when dry, causing problems for any pavement material placed on top of it. It is difficult to compact and is a poor foundation material. But when mixed with sufficient quantities of lime and water, the clay soil changes into a much more useful material, one that is a granular type of soil that is easier to compact and can accept fluctuations in moisture without swelling and shrinking like it did in its former state. As you can see, the lime is being placed in a slurry form. This means that at the plant, it is loaded as a dry material into a special slaker tank that blends the lime with water to form a lime slurry with an approximately 38% solids content. It is very important that the slurry content is maintained. It is then loaded into special trailers and route to the job site. These trucks and this lime come from Chemical Lime's new Braunfels plant, located about 25 miles north of the project. However, it should be noted that all three of the member companies of the Lime Association of Texas are participating equally in the cost of providing the lime for these street reconstructions. Lime Association of Texas members include Austin White Lime Company, located in Austin, Texas, Chemical Lime Company in Fort Worth, Texas, and Texas Lime Company in Dallas, Texas. These dedicated members of the lime industry have plants throughout the state. The lime is placed uniformly over the limits of the project in order to ensure that consistent coverage is achieved. As you can see, it has the consistency of a thin milkshake. Prior to the placement, the soil is scarified to break it up a little to help the lime react and mix more easily. The depth of treatment for this project is 6 inches, and through careful engineering testing, the amount of lime used is 9% by weight of soil. Normally the percentage would be slightly less, probably on the order of 6-7%, to 7%, but organics present in the soil necessitated the increased percentage. The mixing of the lime slurry into the soil begins immediately after placement. The mixing machine, a workin provided by Cooper Equipment, is very powerful and is able to substantially mix the lime after just one pass. In order for the lime to work most effectively and to penetrate into the clay to create the chemical reaction which ultimately changes it into a workable material, a second pass of mixing is completed on the first day. This process is known as the initial mixing. Lime stabilization is a two mixing stage process, so after the first two passes of mixing, which constitutes the first stage, the lime soil mixture is left to mellow. The mellowing phase requires that the soil be left in a loosely compacted state to ensure that the chemical reaction between the calcium in the lime and the minerals in the clay continues. For this project, the mellowing period is 48 hours because the clay is highly plastic. The mellowing period can often be as short as 24 hours, and for lower volume residential streets such as this one, traffic is able to drive on it during the mellowing period in the evenings. Once the mellowing period is passed, the mixing machine is brought back out and it conducts the same process as it did on the first day. This time, you can see that the lime has really broken down the clay and the material looks like a sandy loam as the mixing machine processes it. Notice how it crumbles and falls through the fingers and contrast that with the clay clods you saw being held earlier prior to the addition of the lime. The gradation requirements have been easily achieved in just one pass in the final mixing stage. After final mixing, compaction immediately begins. A segmented wheel or sheep's foot roller is being used to achieve initial compaction. After the segmented wheel roller, a steel drum roller and pneumatic tire roller are used to knit the surface and create a smooth, consistent surface. Laboratory testing is required to make sure that the densities and optimum moisture contents are achieved. The compacted surface will be moist cured for two days over the weekend prior to the placement of the base material that will be stabilized with an asphalt emulsion. This portion of the project includes pulverizing the existing base and surfacing layers and stabilizing them with an asphalt emulsion to create a new layer of asphalt stabilized base. Distress in the old pavement is eliminated by this process which provides an efficient form of recycling. The type and amount of stabilizing or binding agents is determined based on the properties of the existing materials. 
Obtaining representative samples of the existing materials and conditioning them to represent their characteristics after they have been reclaimed is very important. For this project, a cationic, slow setting engineered asphalt emulsion was selected to provide a material that is compatible with the reclaimed materials. The asphalt emulsion was produced by Ergon at their facility in Pleasanton, Texas, about 30 miles south of the project location. The products that we use in this, there's various products, they're designed, Ergon designs them to be used with different aggregates. You can also add new base products and you can also use recycled asphalt to add strength and integrity. And the, basically the process is, is, is the reason they do it is they want to reclaim and use the aggregates and the material that are out there, thus saving time and money. Full depth reclamation is often done in place without requiring removal of materials from the site. As you have seen before, this project required removing the existing pavement in order to stabilize the subgrade. Consequently, the materials were removed from the site until the subgrade stabilization was completed, then returned and placed over the completed roadbed using a motor grader. Most of the material removed and returned on this project was reclaimed asphalt pavement, or RAP, which was obtained by cold milling the original pavement. The amount of asphalt emulsion necessary to adequately coat the aggregate particles broken down during the milling operation and the total amount of fluids necessary to allow for compaction was determined through laboratory testing done by Fugro South. The asphalt emulsion content selected for this project was approximately 4% by weight of the total mixture, resulting in a residual asphalt application of about 2.5%. Reclaimed aggregate base materials and cement bound materials would have required a higher asphalt emulsion content to achieve successful stabilization and resistance to moisture damage. After the reclaimed material was spread to the desired depth and grade, a working reclaimer was used to blend the material with the engineered asphalt emulsion. The asphalt emulsion was delivered directly to the project, where the transport was used as a nurse truck to supply emulsion for blending with the wrap. The flow of the emulsion is interlocked with the forward speed and mixing depth of the reclaimer, providing precise control of the amount of asphalt emulsion applied and thorough blending of all materials. In this case, about six inches of material was processed in a single pass. The same type of equipment and process are used for traditional full depth reclamation. The only difference is that there is usually an initial dry pass of the reclaimer to break down the existing material uniformly. After blending materials and assuring that the materials are at the correct depths and fluids content, the material is compacted to meet a minimum dry density as determined from the laboratory analysis. Conventional compaction equipment, such as a vibratory pad foot roller, tandem, smooth drum vibratory rollers, and rubber tire rollers are used. While local traffic can use the pavement after compaction is completed, a new wearing course consisting of an asphalt paving mixture or surface treatment needs to be applied. For urban street construction, hot mix asphalt is the most common wearing course since it provides a smooth, agreeable surface and can be placed to match elevations of drainage inlets. In this project, warm mix asphalt is to be used for the wearing surface as will be described in a few minutes. For rural projects, surface treatments such as chip seals and cape seals are also appropriate. Full depth reclamation produces a sound, stabilized base that improves the load carrying capacity of the pavement while maximizing use of existing available materials. Warm mix asphalt is laid basically the same as traditional hot mix asphalt. The mix is delivered from 50 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit cooler this reduction makes a noticeable difference in working conditions around the asphalt spreader. Odor and smoke is reduced as well as heat conditions on construction workers. However, the workability is maintained or even improved from traditional hot mix asphalt. This EvoTherm warm mix is being laid at about 200 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 90 to 100 degrees cooler than conventional hot mix and workability is similar. Compaction is one of, if not, the most important element of asphalt paving for maintaining durability. If good compaction is not obtained, excessive air voids allow moisture and oxygen to rapidly oxidize the bitumen in the pavement, thereby increasing cracking and raveling. One significant benefit for warm mix asphalt is the longer time required for obtaining proper compaction. The laws of thermodynamics tell us the lower mix temperature, the slower the reduction of temperature occurs. This added time, along with improved compaction characteristics of warm mix, allows for improved densification of the mat. Rolling and compaction procedures of warm mix asphalt are conducted similar to that of traditional hot mix asphalt. 
The asphalt paving industry also sees a great potential with warm mix asphalt for using more recycled asphalt pavement, or RAP, in the mix. As reported by the National Asphalt Pavement Association, RAP is the most widely recycled product in the United States. RAP can save asphalt cement and stone, thereby reducing cost of construction. The added workability and improved mixing characteristics of warm mix asphalt allows for a greater use of RAP. Some mixes with high wrap contents may tend to become a bit stiff. Warm mix may improve this condition. This warm mix produced by Vulcan Materials Company in San Antonio has 30% wrap in it. This warm mix process uh, is, uh, takes minor modification to the plant. It takes a metering system with a pump that uh, meters it, ties it into the uh, control system of the plant and meters the chemistry into the uh, AC line that is feeding the drum mixer. And uh, this process allows us to reduce production temperatures as much as 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is a significant improvement. And in doing so, it also uh, uh, shows to us has promoted uh, compaction, improved uh, our compaction densities on the roadway on projects we have done in, uh, in months past. Among other benefits users and producers can expect to see is as much as a 50% savings in fuel and the reduction of up to 50% of stack emissions while nearly eliminating detectable fumes and organic matter. Another added benefit to warm mix asphalt is the extended haul time made feasible with lower mix and compaction temperatures. This may allow longer haul distances so that hot mix asphalt production facilities can reach projects at greater distances reducing the costly expense of moving portable facilities. This lower compaction temperature also may extend the paving season, especially in colder climates. We hope you have enjoyed learning about these three technologies and suggest you consider them for future street reconstruction projects.